Many people tonight have a, a silly notion. Well, it's more than a silly notion. It's a sad notion. It's a sad notion tonight that God loves the good, but He hates the bad. wonder, do you believe that tonight? God loves the good, but He hates the bad. Or God loves the religious, but He hates the heathen. I wonder, do you believe that tonight? God loves the religious, but he hates the heathen. Or I wonder, do you believe this tonight? God loves the kind, but he hates the cruel. I wonder, is that what you believe tonight? Do you believe tonight God loves the good, but hates the bad? Do you believe that God loves the religious but hates the, the, the heathen? Do you believe tonight God, lo God loves the kind but hates the cruel? So many people do have that sad notion tonight. You see, when we come to John 3, 16 tonight, Nowhere will you find in that one verse that God hates anybody. Nowhere will you find in John 3, 16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'll tell you something now, friend. Nowhere will you see in John 3, 16 that God loves the good and hates the bad. It's not in John 3, 16. And neither will you find in John 3, 16 that God loves the religious but hates the heathen. You'll never find that in John 3.16. And neither will you find in John 3.16 tonight that God loves the kind but hates the cruel. You'll not find that in John 3.16. I'll tell you what you will find in John 3.16 tonight. God loves the bad as much as he loves the good. I'll tell you what else you'll find in John 3, 16 tonight. God loves the heathen as much as he loves the religious. And I'll tell you something else you'll find in John 3, 16 tonight. God loves the cruel as much as he loves the kind. That might be hard to believe tonight. But that's the gospel. God does love the bad. God does love the heathen. God does love the cruel. Because you see, if God didn't love the bad, and if God didn't love the heathen, and God didn't love the, the cruel, well, then God wouldn't be a God of love, would he? Oh, no, friends. God loves the bad. God loves the cruel. God loves the heathen. I'll tell you something else, friend. God loves the cruel because I'll tell you he loved Saul of Tarsus, didn't he? Was it not Saul of Tarsus that consented to Stephen's death? God loved the cruel Saul of Tarsus. 
God loved the Philippian jailer enough to save him. And mind you, he wasn't a nice boy. The dying thief that day on Calvary's hill, tell me, did God love him or did God hate him? He was a thief. Oh, no. God loved him. Do you know what's a greater mystery tonight? God loves you. God loves me. Tonight, God wants to open his heart this evening. And God wants you to see what is in his heart. And in my text tonight, you will see God's heart for sinners. God's heart for all sinners, not some of them. God's heart for all sinners. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. Here we have God's heart for sinners. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? You know the first thing that text shows me concerning God's heart for sinners tonight? That text shows me that there is a love in God's heart for sinners. God says tonight, For I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Do you know what God is saying in that verse? God is saying in that verse tonight, I have no pleasure in the death of the unsaved. God is saying tonight, I have no pleasure in the death of the unconverted. God is saying, I have no pleasure in the death of the ungodly. I have no pleasure in the death of the unrighteous. Why? Because I love the unsaved. Because I love the ungodly. Because I love the unconverted. Unsaved man, unsaved woman, there is love in the heart of God for you, and there's love in the heart of God for me, because God loves everybody. And nowhere will you find in Holy Scripture tonight that God hates anybody. Do you know something tonight? When God sent his son into the world to die, he sent him into the world to die for Adolf Hitler as much as he sent him for anybody else. You know, friend, this evening, God tonight loves all sinners and loves you this evening. And he says in 2 Samuel 14, 14, For we must needs die, and our, wa- and our water is spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Listen, that's for all of us. We all must needs die, and the moment you die, you're like water that's spilt on the ground. You can't gather it up again. Because once you die, you die, that's it. Five years ago this morning, exactly five years ago this morning, my father died. Five years, where'd them go to? 
wants, he went, he went. And there's no coming back. Just like water that's spilt in the ground cannot be gathered up again, can't be brought back. So it is with you and me. But here's the wee thought in that verse tonight. But he devises means that his banished be not expelled from him. Do you know what that means tonight? That means God will do anything in his power to see a person saved. God loves tonight the sinner. God loves tonight the unrighteous. God loves tonight the ungodly. God loves you. And God loves me. For I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Many years ago, in the old city of Dusseldorf, there was an artist, and his name was Stenberg. He was known as the great artist of Dusseldorf. He painted many great pictures, but one of the great pictures he painted was the picture of the crucifixion. He painted that picture like all other of the great paintings of Stenberg's, he painted it with every fine detail. But Stenberg was a godless and a Christless man. One day walking through a, a wooded area, he came across a young lady called Pepita. She was sitting in the wood weaving baskets together. She was a beautiful young lady. And Stenberg thought it would be good if she could come to his studio and allow him to allow him to paint a portrait of her. She agreed to come. But Peter arrived at the studio, and she was greatly intrigued and captivated by the great painting of the cross. She never owned a Bible. She never went to Sunday school. She knew nothing. And she asked Stenberg, what was this? Oh, he said, that's just a painting of, of God's Son. At least he knew that much. Come on over here and Take up your position till we get started. No, Stenberg, she says. No, no, tell me more. What was all this about? Was he a good man? Was he a bad man? Tell me something about him. He must have been an awful bad man if they'd done that to him. No, said Stenberg, he was actually a good man. He healed the sick. Went about doing good. And the mystery behind it, Stenberg says, God allowed that to happen to his son. But why? Why, said the Peter, why did God allow that to happen? Stenberg, the godless, Christless man, said, well, the Bible teaches us that he loved us and allowed his son to die on the cross. Oh, said the Peter, it must thrill your heart that God loves you so much that he allowed his son to die for you. Those words tonight pierced his heart. And after he started the, the painting of Pepita, she had to leave and go home after an hour and after she left, he went back to the picture and looked at the picture again. And he was captivated by her words, so much so, he gave his heart to Christ. 
a godless, Christless man, totally captured by the love of God in the picture of the cross. Wonder tonight, has your heart ever been captivated, captured by the story of the cross tonight? Because the cross reveals God's love and God's heart for sinners. And this is why God says tonight, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. In his heart, there is a love for sinners. But in his heart tonight, there is a longing for sinners. And listen to what he says. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Ah, yes, but here's the longing of his heart, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Do you know God longs for you tonight, sinner friend? God longs for you. God longs for you to turn this evening. Notice what it says here in this text, that he, but that the wicked turn from his way. Oh, that you would turn from your way this evening. Man thinks, and there are so many tonight who believe that their way saves, that their way will take them to heaven, that their way is enough. Oh, sinner friend tonight, your way is not enough. Your way won't take you to heaven. Your way won't do with God. And the longing within God's heart tonight is this, but that the wicked turn from his way. That's turning from sin tonight. That's turning from your own way, dear. Turning from your own way. Man's way is not God's way. And tonight, if you're trusting in something this evening, apart from the Lord Jesus. That's your way to me. Do you see a person tonight who is believing and trusting in any other way other than Christ? That's an evil way in the sight of God. You say to me, George, that's an awful thing to even imagine. There's many people tonight who are trusting in good works, that's as much evil in the sight of God as anything, because do you know why? Because man tries to make his good works equal to Christ. You trying to make your works tonight equal to Christ's atoning death on the cross? It's an evil thing if you're doing it. Do you know tonight the kingdom of Morn, just like any other place in the north of Ireland, is saturated with people tonight who are putting their trust in church, who are putting their trust in all these things, who are putting their trust in ministers, who are putting their trust in priests, who are putting their trust in all these religious sacraments. The longing of God's heart tonight is this that you would turn away from all these things this evening. All these things will not save. A man who puts his trust in the church is as much a blasphemy as a man who says there's no God. A man who puts his trust in a church, a man who puts his trust in good works, is saying that that equals the Lord Jesus. That does God. Let me say something tonight to your own safe friend. Man needs to waken up. His way won't lead to God. And I'll tell you this, it's a sin in God's sight 
if you are trusting in any other thing apart from the, the, the Lord Jesus. The only hope for sinners tonight is this, is in the person who came from heaven's glory. The only hope for sinners is in a person tonight, and that person is the Lord Jesus. The only hope for sinners this evening is in the Lamb of God, which for sinners was slain. The only hope on saved friend tonight is in the finished work of the cross. All other ways, they lead to hell. And all other ways lead to destruction. Listen to the longing of God's heart tonight. Oh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way. And you know, God was speaking to people tonight who were worshiping idols, who were worshiping other things, who were trusting in other things. That's the evilness that God was speaking of here. He was speaking to a people who had turned their back on God and who were trusting in all false things. And I'll tell you, friend, tonight, I wonder, is that you this evening? You're trusting in something that will not do you when your time to die comes. Do you see the love in God's heart for sinners? I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Can you feel, can you hear the longing of God's heart this evening? But that he would turn from his ways and live. Do you know, friend, it breaks parents' hearts when children rebel Tell me you causing God's heart to break tonight because you rebel. God longs for you to be saved, dear. God longs for you to be saved, sir. And Christ on Calvary's cross displays that love and displays that longing. Vainly, vainly. In the heart of God, there is a love for sinners. In the heart of God, there is a longing for sinners. Ah, but listen. In the heart of God tonight, there is a lane for sinners. A lane for sinners. And each side of that lane, you've got a message. One side of that lane tonight, you've got God's call. Turn ye, he says. Turn ye. many times have you heard God call? How many times tonight has God called you to trust in my Son, to forsake your sin, to forsake all these silly notions that you can get saved some other way? Listen, this is what God is saying tonight. Turn from any old silly notion that you can get saved apart from trusting my Son. And God has called all these years. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. You see, he who spared not his own son delivered him up for us all. I. 
You see, in that lane tonight, there's a call. On the other side of the lane, there's a choice. Why will you die? God would have all men to be saved. God is not willing that any should perish. God never chooses a person to be saved and then chooses another person to be lost. No, God chooses nobody to be lost because God loves you too much to let you to be lost. But you have your own choice to make tonight. God is saying to your heart and God is saying to your soul, why will you die? This is God's heart for sinners. Come to him tonight. He loved you and died on the cross for you. Come to him and live. Why will you die? That's bound a wee word of prayer together, please. Lord, tonight we thank thee that you will not for a sinner to be lost. It's the longing of your heart, Lord, for sinners to be saved. We realize, Lord, tonight you leave the choice to the sinner themselves. Oh, God, give deciding grace, we pray. And may, Lord, tonight the message of the cross touch some soul tonight and draw some soul to the feet of the lovely Lord Jesus. Hear our prayer tonight. For his name's sake. Amen. We're going to sing a verse.